chili lovers. So today I am throwing this together really quickly because I'm going on a week-long vacation tomorrow and I'm freaking out because I'm in the process of packing and I'm just like I need to make a video. I had a plan for this video. I just have it sat down and done it. So you know when you're like have so many things to do and you like end up just like going in circles because you're like I gotta do this but I gotta do this over here but I gotta do this over here. That's been me basically the last three days because I I don't know. I'm excited and my brain's like Dip. Today we're going to talk about another gecko more since that seemed to be quite a good um, successful video was talking about the white and yellow. So this week I thought I would do snows since we're going on this like morph uh, color scheme category, um, I'm gonna go with the snow snake. Let's back up a little um, in case you aren't familiar with gecko genetics very, I guess, in depth at all, <laughs> if you're a beginner. Um, basically, in leopard geckos, uh, if you can dream it up, you could probably make it. That's why I enjoy working with them so much. When I started researching into their genetics, um, I was really captivated because there's a lot to it and I hope that you'll find that through all my videos and find a morph that works for you because there's so many different kinds and combinations that there's something out there for everyone. And um, so I'm gonna break it down. Basically, some of the main things you can, uh, I guess, alter in leopard geckos, I've broke down to like four different categories. One is color, obviously you can do, uh, there's certain genes that affect color, like the white and yellow, and like the snow that I'm going to talk about today. Also, there are um, like polygenic projects, which we're not going to get into today, but I will one day um, in the future. And then also you can alter eye pattern slash pigment. Um, you can alter body pattern, and you can even alter size. Like there's giants and super giants, and then what's a standard normal size leopard gecko just in case you didn't know. So we're diving into color morphs because I think that is the easiest to grasp and easiest to show you right now. So going into even more subcategories um, of the snow category, there are a few different kinds of snows. There is the max snow, which is what we're gonna talk about. That's what I work with. Um, there is the tug snow, and there's also the gym snow. You'll find that the most frequently found form of the snow leopard geckos is going to be the max snow, which is what I have, and I'm going to go show you a few of my own. Who exactly, you ask? Well, it makes them appear kind of more white, like snow. Go figure. You'll find that a lot of these morphs um, have a pretty explicit explanation. You'll find that these morphs have a pretty um, easy explanatory uh, name, like the white and yellow for white and yellow, and the snow for the snowy look. If I seem rushed, it's because I am, because I feel this need that I'm in a hurry to get things done before I sail off into the Gulf of Mexico, and I can't turn it off. It's like. I, I can't perceive what it is exactly. I feel like it's excitement and I feel like I've got to hurry and I've got so much to do when I don't. And so if I seem rushed, that's what it is. Maybe that'll help me seem more excited for this. So let's get it done. That and my camera's about to die like super soon. We're on like 20%. Let's knock it out 20%. So the snows that I predominantly work with are bold snows. I also enjoy bold striped snows as well. Um, I, another popular morph, which I'm sure um, you've heard of, which is the Super Snow Eclipse. Oh, I will show you a couple of those, which is a super form of the Max Snow in conjunction with the Eclipse morph. So it's actually not solemnly a snow, it's a snow and an eclipse, but it's the Super Snow version of the Super Snow plus Eclipse gene. I'll just show you. I, I'm a visual learner. I gotta just show you, and then well, let's see some snows. Okay, so let me introduce you to this female here. Her name is Flossie. Um, 
I named her Flossie because when she was a baby, she had like the perfect markings of like the ideal Max Snow Eclipse. As you can tell on her body, she's got a more palish yellow on her body here. Um, and then her head has a white background under her spots as well as her tail. And that's a quality of the snows. Um, now when you have a super form, a super snow, it completely washes out this yellow pigment. So you have a striking white background with the black coloration or markings. This here is one of my 2017 babies. She doesn't have a name because she's not a breeder. I'm actually going to be selling her. Um, she is another Max Snow Eclipse, but as you can see on her body, she's got kind of reduced pattern. So that's what it looks like with the Max Snow gene, but with a di different, um, you know, um, overlay of pattern on her. She's technically like. I don't know if you would call her a hypo necessarily because you can't really count those dots, but she's definitely got reduced body pattern um, in comparison with Flossie. Yeah, study that. Also see the white head and white tail under the background, or the white head and the white tail is the background color under her black spots. Dominant Jean just like the white and yellow, but it's also co-dominant. What does that mean? And you'll hear the Max Snow being called co-dominant all the time. I want you to know that co-dominant is actually a slang term. The appropriate term for the way this um, genetic trait works is actually in complete dominance. Whoa, incomplete. Now I know y'all have already met Echo in my white and yellow video, but here she is again because she's a good example and she's really pretty. So Echo is a bold Max Snow. That's really a bold stripe Max Snow. So she's got the white head, white tail, yellow background on the body. And then instead of having those little tiny dots like Flossie and that other little female that I have for sale, um, she's got these big black patterns. And that's a result of the bold gene because it's making her pigment um, and pattern bold. So that's an example of alternating your pattern. I'm going to show you one more bold stripe snow because I love them and you guys see them. Tuxedo, aka Tux, and he can be a bit temperamental at times. Believe it or not, this guy is actually, um, I think he's two, going on three, and as you can see, he is tiny. I also got him from SC Reptiles as well. Um, I feed him, he eats. He doesn't eat as much as I would like, but he's still just a little guy. I actually had to skip off on breeding him in 2017 because he was so tiny. He just didn't grow in time and like I expected him to grow in order to breed for 2017, but that's okay. No rush. He's a great guy. He's actually starting to get a little bit longer. I'm just not filling out yet. So that's Tux. Same thing, he's got the white uh, head and tail, the yellow background body, and then he is a bold stripe snow, so he's got the bold stripe pattern on top of the snow background. Snow, you can either have this genetic combination for snow, or you can have two dominant alleles, and basically, um, remember how when we talked about the white and yellows that looking at an animal with this genetic makeup and this genetic makeup, looking at them side by side, um, you shouldn't be able to tell a difference really on physical characteristics. Well with these, when an animal has both of these homozygous dominant alleles for snow, then there is an 
obvious change in the animal that lets you go, okay, that's a super snow. Okay, yeah, that's a max snow, which is really nice to have those visual markers. It um, cuts down on breeding time to figure out what alleles your animal's carrying. So those visual markers are really nice. So I'm gonna show you next a super snow eclipse so you can get the idea of what they look like versus the regular max snow. This is another one of my total eclipses. Her name is Inca. I got her from SC Reptiles, um, tracking back lineage back to art geckos. So she's a really nice female super snow eclipse. So I've bred her to Kazam, the male you just saw. And I'm gonna show you a couple of their daughters that I kept back from 2017. This is Unicorn, because she is as rare and beautiful as they come. <laughs> so this is the result of breeding um, Inca and Kazam. Now breeding those two, I'm going to get 100% super snow eclipses like this. So what do you get if you breed a super snow to a max snow? And what happens if you breed a super snow to a normal or a max snow to a normal? I'm gonna show you that here next. Okay, this is where Punnett squares really come in handy. Um, so the first setup I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you breeding a max snow to a normal and what you'll get. So transferring over all our fun stuff here. So when you breed, and you'll probably have to do this if you're a starting out breeder, um, Punnett squares are like your best friend. You can also download um, calculation, uh, genetic, leopard gecko genetic calculation apps on your phone, and you can type in all the genetic information of your male and your female and look up the possible um, results for their offspring and also the percentage of what it is um, what's likely going to hit the odds that you're trying to reach. But when you breed a max snow to a normal, so half of the babies are going to inherit the big S or the, the snow allele, so 50% because we're transferred it over, over here, 50% are going to be max snows while the other 50% get the little s and the big N, and so they will be normal. So you have a half and half shot. Now, if you breed a super snow, like Kazam, to a normal, you carry it over, you're gonna get 100% max snows. Because again, you're only getting one of the big alleles, but 100% of your babies will be snows. And that's another reason I think max snows are a great beginner morph for people that are just starting to breed. One, because they're super easy to identify. Two, they're pretty readily available. And there's also a lot of variation with them too. You can also have some very expensive snows. Um, I'll show you a few others of mine in a minute. I wanted to show you all this one. This is Echo's daughter. She's a 2018 hatchling, and she is going to be a holdback. Um, she is a bold snow. So what makes this girl so valuable to me um, is that she's got these big, bold patterns and in between her bold patterns she has like no spots or blemishes and she stayed relatively clean like this and so she's a really valuable animal um of course beauty is in the eye of the beholder but um, most of the time with the max nose the more faint you can get this yellow um kind of the more expensive or desirable they're gonna be 
So like my little Max Snow eclipses with the spots are not going to be near as, as valuable price-wise as like this girl would be. And, but like I said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, you know, a $50 gecko might mean more to someone than a $300 gecko would mean to someone. And that's what's great about these guys is there's so many colors. There's something for everybody. Read a super snow to a max snow. So we'll put our, our super on the top since it's almost like it's dominant. And we'll put it there. And then our little one. So you transfer over your S's. And you get... 50% will have two dominant alleles, so you'll get 50% super snows, and you'll get 50% max snows, which is pretty easy to remember. You cross a super snow here and a max snow here, you'll get about a 50-50 chance of getting either. Super easy, they're easy to tell straight from the egg what they are, um, so your credibility is safe there, you can label them correctly. It's a really good beginner morph. Now, if you breed a super snow to a super snow, you're gonna get 100% super snows because the only alleles involved are big S's or the uh, homozygous dominant. So super snow, super snow, 100% super snows. Super snow to max snow, 50-50. Super snow to normal, 100% max snows. Max snow to normal, 50-50. You recognize the pattern? I know it'll take a little while to like stick um, if you're starting out, but um, that's all you, have, you can do. You just got to keep researching it over and over. Um, practice quizzing yourself by going on um, websites of animals that are for sale and try to look at the picture and guess what the genetics of that animal are and then look at it and just quiz yourself. That's what I did um, when I was getting started and just doing research in the beginning. percent battery on my camera so I've got to make a really quick outro real quick um, basically to wrap it up uh, the max snow was developed by reptiles by Mac there are three other forms of snow max snow being the most popular and readily available then there's the gem snow and the tug snow um, the max snow gene washes out um, the body pigment to a pale yellow while the head and the tail are normally white. Um, there's a super form of the Max Snow called the Super Snow because the Super Snow or the Snow Gene is a co dominant or incomplete dominant gene. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't have more to show you of like combinations of snow with like albinos. That's not really my cup of tea, so I don't have any to show you. Um, but you can mix Max Snow with pretty much um, any other combination of things you can think of besides the other snows. That's a big no-no. Don't mix the snows because they are separated for a reason. Um, that is like a number one big no-no. And same with albinos, you don't mix albinos. So if you're starting out, don't do that. Don't think you're going to be the creative person to be the first one to do it. There's a reason. Just don't do it. Until next time, I will see y'all later. I plan to film my trip to Mexico and Belize and Honduras and hopefully capture some cool wildlife as well as some historical um, kind of aztec buildings as well. Temples, I guess you could say. Are they, they're technically buildings, right? But they're temples more specifically. So yeah, um, I should come back a little more um, less keyed up and more relaxed. So until next time, thank you for watching.